New report due out later this week from the National Institute on Early Education Research finds that a number of states are struggling to find ways to improve access to high quality pre kindergarten. Tonight, we look at a unique approach taken by a preschool in Seattle, Washington. It's giving children life lessons that go beyond the classroom and providing a unique opportunity to seniors. Special correspondent Cat Wise has our report. It's part of our Making the Grade series on education that airs every Every Tuesday. What do you see? A brown bear. A brown, brown bear. bear. Does everybody Mary McGovern is 95 bear? years old, and one of her favorite oh, things to do is to read to toddlers. Okay. And what is that? A bird? A bird. A bird. What color oh, is bird. the bird? Red. 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 Everybody yeah. knows that. Luckily for Mary, she doesn't need to go any further than down the hall to find her young friends. Oh, see, look in here as a little kid. See that? Oh, yeah. McGovern lives <laughs> at Providence Mount St. Vincent, a nursing home in Seattle, Washington, that also houses a daycare for children up to five years of age. Can you hand out a scarf? Thank you, honey. Thank you. There you go. Oh, perfect. One water, water. Every weekday, 500 residents are joined by 125 children in the facility affectionately called the Mount. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. I see you. Administrator Charlene Boyd. We wanted to create a place for people to come to live and not to come to die. Whoa! So in 1991, Boyd and other administrators added a high quality preschool to the nursing home and created an intergenerational learning center a community for the very old and very young. Why is there this railing here? This railing is here, not for the kids, but it's here for residents. And it's, it's a, a, a safety piece for a resident in a wheelchair to push themselves up and to hold on and to bring themselves to a standing position and watch the children through the window. So they can stand here they and look in. They can stand here and look in. It's putting high quality childcare in a setting that links old and young together. Say, have a nice day making the magic between these two ages together, bringing joy to the residents and joy to those young children. It's just like this magical yeah. formula that happens every day. Get a high five. There, there, she, there, she knows how to do a high five. Most of them, they're curious about me, why you're here. I tell them I'm here because when I was living in my house, when I got too old, I wasn't always walking straight, and sometimes I would fall. And if I fell, I had to have some help to get up because I couldn't get off the floor. I want to hug your baby dog. I think there are things that both parties take away from the interaction. It's not like a lifelong relationship, but just for that moment in time, they're both enjoying each other's company and getting something out of their relationship with that person in that moment. Another one, give me a hug. Come on, good hug. All of us have common needs to be recognized. All of us have common needs to be loved. And all of us have common needs to share life together. And so these children bring life and vibrancy and normalcy. It's a gift. It's a gift in exposing young families to the positive aspects of aging. And it's a gift of also having children seeing frailty, normalcy, and that's part of that full circle of life. He rocks his treetops all day long, hopping and a bopping and singing his song. Intergenerational activities can be spontaneous or planned, like this sing-along. There's 36 visits possible each week. So each classroom, six classrooms, has at least three visits, um, up to six visits. In my the director of the center, Marie Hoover, says children become comfortable with elderly residents at an early age. Whether they're in a wheelchair or in a walker or maybe they're hard to understand or you have to speak louder, it is just about who that individual is and they adjust. The kids just don't, they really don't blink an eye. This is normal. This is just who this resident is. 93-year-old Harriet Thompson joined this sing-along on her way to the dining hall. I usually like to go sit down for a while before dinner, but I, I heard them singing, so in we went. What do you experience internally when you're around these children? Happiness. Just plain old happiness. You know, yeah. It beats anything else. 
beach television. Boredom and loneliness are sort of the plagues of older adults. Oh, there she goes. Yep. There's nothing Good more job, delightful than seeing young children with noise, with laughter. You see the residents and then hear the sound of the kids coming down the hall and it's as though sunlight just came through the window. I'm a great great grandmother so I, but they're in other, another town and I can't hold my own little girl because she's far away, so, but this, this is what makes me so happy. You get to know them and watch them and act silly with them and if, it's good to feel like you're three years old again. Teachers see similarities in the way these two very different age groups communicate. The brain of a toddler and as somebody is beginning to have, you know, some signs of dementia, the brains are similar and their development or their decline is similar. That was apparent in this art class where resident John Goss, a retired surgeon, and five-year-old William Cranick teamed up as painting partners. This is a jump brush. A giant. Giant, yes. He's operating on my plane and I'm, off, off, I'm operating it on his plane. And so we have an attachment. He helped me, and we were working together. I use blue, he used blue, and I use green, and he used green. Well, it's wonderfully fun, because things come out of your hand better than your mouth. And the kids are certainly of that age where there isn't this sense of, oh, that's weird or something to be scared of, and I, I think that's happening on both sides of the age. What's your name? Annie. Later the same day, William Cranick visited the skilled nursing section of the Mount to help make sandwiches for the homeless. I have three sandwiches in bag. Oh, I see. Here, William partnered with 92-year-old Annie Carter. We just talk about our work, just like anybody else on a, on a job. That's our job, so we have to do the right thing. This is Alex. Hi, Alex. How are you? Hi. Mm -hmm. How do the children deal with difficult situations like a resident that might be declining or even death? How do the children deal with those situations? Developmentally, it's not really something they can conceptualize. Even our oldest kids at five, kids don't quite get that whole death concept. If the kids bring that up um, to the teachers, then the teacher's response is going to be, I miss Mary too, what's your favorite memory about what she did? And those are the kinds of things they're going to focus in on as opposed to somebody died. They just not quite ready to get that concept. <laughs> Child care at the Mount is competitively priced with similar high quality preschools in the area. Currently 400 families are on the wait list. Administrators believe the Mount's model can be replicated across the country, and they expect interest to peak this summer when a documentary featuring their work called Present Perfect is released. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Cat Wise in Seattle.